Who is Magnus? I, I would probably say that I'm a, a student and a teacher of health. And what I do is I invite people to discover themselves and find a new journey with reference to taking care of themselves. In other words, becoming empowered with reference to health and fitness. We're a little bit lost out there with the subliminal messages from the media, whether it be newspapers, televisions or what have you. And I do believe that we become disempowered in the way of taking a pill to treat a symptom. And we all know, well I'd like to think we all know, that your headache wasn't caused from the absence of an aspirin, so what was the etiology or root cause of the pain in your head? And it's more empowering to realise, well maybe you were dehydrated, maybe you were stressed, learned some breathing techniques or meditation or something like that, rather than thinking oh, I'm going to take an aspirin, which incidentally kills over 20,000 people every year. So my main message really is to provide knowledge and information to people so that they become empowered and ultimately take control of their own health and well-being. And they can only do that, I believe, with searching and finding out truly who they are. And who they are is not who they think they are. So even though my message is about nutrition, it's actually the bigger picture of finding out what their passion is, what their purpose is, what's their next journey. Because believe it or not, we're all teachers. We're all teaching, whether we're standing outside doing something or we're just looking at books in libraries, we're all teaching. So the idea would be really is that to be aligned with what I call your soul or core values and in the words of Gandhi become the change you want to see in the world so really my message is find out who you are it's a journey and while you're finding out who you are here's some cool information which I'll provide you with about health and as a quick snapshot I might talk about what I call the <clears throat> the eight toxic sins and part of that would be to remove these from your diet so an example would be things like wheat barley wheat and rye contains gluten very damaging to the first brain which would be the stomach also damages the first, uh, the second brain, which would be the, the main brain, as people know it as. And it, it can cause um, havoc up there with um, brain fog, and it can cause a plethora of different diseases where the body's not at ease from cancers all the way through. Um, pasteurization, salt, unless it's natural salt, which would be Himalayan, Celtic, or Hawaiian. There may be other salts, but those are ones I'm familiar with. Um, sugar. Oh. <laughs> I always remember once I gave a, a live on BBC Radio Cumbria and I was there for a whole year, 13 months, they invited me every month to remind people how to take control of their health and as soon as I mentioned that sugar was a class A drug, immediately they <laughs> never had me back. But sugar is a class A drug and it's something which um, doesn't serve people, it will have great havoc with the hormones, it um, leaches lots of uh, essential vital nutrients from the body. Um, GMO, genetically modified organisms, another thing, if you can get that from your life, just be mindful of the products that you are perhaps consuming. Um, sweeteners, aspartame, splendor, acylfame, those things, again, read products. Um, what else have we got? Um, processed oils, canola oil, saffro um, oil, um, sunflower oil, those things just will not serve people because they contain too many PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. And also they've been treated to high temperatures, um, sunlight, and they've been carcinogenic in a way, they've been fetid, um, rancid, they've just been destroyed. And yet they're putting plastic containers on our shelves, create havoc with the hormones and everything inside a human body. So one of the simple things I say to people is if, if you are more alive than that which you're about to eat, you've got a smarter choice to make. So my invite really is for people to find out what foods are right for them. And that's where one of the things that I deal with is called metabolic typing. There's no one diet that works for anyone. I mean, an example would be if you go to Eskimos, what foods do they eat? 90% fat and protein. Well, you don't see them queuing up with ketone problems or kidney problems in hospital, but that's the food that's right for them. And then you've got um, people perhaps that live closer to the equator, so let's say that Aborigines or maybe the Hunza tribe in North Pakistan. Well, what foods do they eat? Well, they're more to do with carbohydrates. So ultimately, it's finding out the foods that are right for you. Coming back to the eight toxic sins, uh, salt, sugar, pasteurization and grains. Um, we talked about sweeteners, uh, GMO. Let's see the one I've got. Um, oh, um, processed oils and um, soy or soya. Now many people think that soy or soy is a healthy food. Again, it's an invite to gain some more knowledge and more information. But um, if you go to the Western A Price Foundation or even if you go to the soyonline.nz, more information is provided. Soy contains phytoestrogens, increases your chances of getting breast cancer. Hormonal challenges, it contains a protein fraction which slows down the thyroid. Um, you've got um, 
It contains uh, an analogue of B12, so your body will actually crave more B12 because it, um, it can't process the B12 that's present in soy. It contains small amounts of aluminium. I, I, the list is endless, so again, it's not a healthy food. The best soy, if you did choose, would be fermented um, soys, which would be things like miso, temp tempeh, or natto. So those are just some examples of certain products. So you know, the invite is for people to start and reading labels and start to take control of their own health and to turn back the clock and ask yourself a question: Well, what kind of foods was my great great grandmother eating? And if that's a good food, then then go for it. So dripping's good. <laughs> um, Anything that I say that has eyes that you could chase after for those that aren't vegetarians or vegans, well, we've been eating that for millennia. Um, above or below ground, well, you know what those are, fruit and vegetables, climb a bush or a tree for or swim after like seaweed. Those foods we've been eating for about 3.2 million years. So, like I said, if you're more alive than that which you're about to eat, you do have a smarter choice to make. Turn back the clock. But also I kind of use other habits, so how we were thinking, how we were breathing, drinking, eating, sleeping, and undertaking what I call creative movement or exercise. And when those are all in balance with yin and yang, then we will find harmony and we won't become a medical statistic. So really my message is, is for you to find out who you are, and while you're on that journey, start putting in the right fuel, Attune yourself to people that you want to um, learn from and further yourself, gain more knowledge and become empowered. And the only way I find you can do that is by turning off your televisions and stop reading newspapers. <laughs> um, but no, to find your own journey and what serves you. But that's kind of what the message is about.